but don't get scared. Gamers, today we are coaching women to conquer. So, this is what we're going to do. Today is 15th of December at the time of the recording. She will play for one month. She said, I am committing to at least three hours a day. Will she do that? I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to be coaching her probably every two, three, four days for an hour or two. That's the plan. Uh, I'm going to be streaming all of it. And she's going to play on a new account and only like play the stuff I teach her. So no messing around, no goofing around, no Who's stupid counts? villager rushes or whatever. <laughs> she's going to play legit and try to get as high rating as possible. That's the plan. She asked me, should I play one sieve or multiple? I said, if you want to learn, if you want to improve, if you want to get highest rating, one sieve is better. What is the sieve you chose? English. She'll be playing English. She started off with English, and English, I think, is the simplest sieve for someone that, I mean, never got high ranked in RTS games, right? She was never like Conquer or Grandmaster in StarCraft, so I think in order to teach her the basics of the game, you should start with a basic save and not start with like Chinese and try to, you know, why you why you want to, you know, invent a rocket when you got to get the wheel going first, right? English busted? Sure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the coaching sessions will be uh, from things like, you know, me coaching our build order, which is what kind of we're going to do today. Not build order, but talk about some basics about English that... Uh, she probably thinks she knows, but she don't and we're gonna help her with that and for this one I'm gonna basically give her a path to walk on the highest rank she has reached was last season Yeah, I got I, I scraped the barrel of platinum when I got she lucky reached plat one and then she dropped down immediately That's yeah. when I was when I was telling the stream She reached plat one and then she dropped down and then she reached plat one and dropped down so her highest rank is plat one last season, and since then she's been in gold, and she hasn't really. No, I played. I played a bit. I got to. I'm falling between gold three and gold two right now. So I would say I'm gold two, a solid gold two. Okay, probably yeah. the the memeing, the meme strats, uh, you know, affected that a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So yeah, so you can consider. I know a lot of people are, uh, you know, balding like that guy that gets timed out. That she, she's actually plat. Sure. She's plat one gold three. If that makes you feel better, there you go. So uh, we're gonna see how far she goes with three hours a day and some coaching. I would expect her to get diamond. Uh, I don't know what kind of diamond. I think diamond should be very viable in one month. Um, nice. Again, if she puts in the time, because uh, I think the jump from gold to plat can be fixed super fast, mm -hmm. and by playing one sieve, it's not gonna be too difficult to. Um, to do so i mean my goal was plat three so the fact that you're saying if you can get the diamond if you can get plat three that's diamond one okay. if you can get diamond two diamond one that's diamond two okay that's how it works okay. so everyone is conquer in the end okay <laughs> guys listen for the people that are feeling insecure because she's gonna advance leagues fast don't be like no she's actually diamond level she's not i'm not she loses to gold players she All loses to plat players she also beat a couple of plat players which is why I'm saying she's play one, go three. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> I just wanted to preface this. I did play some normal builds as well with my sibs recently, and I did lose against golds. So I'm, I do think my memory has definitely affected what I've been yeah, doing. Yeah, of course. Because um, I'm really struggling to optimize what I'm doing right now. Because I'm so used to just making scouts, it's really fun, but I actually don't know how to play normally anymore. Let's get started. And by the way, if Twitch chat is always molding and spicy, we're just gonna do this off of stream, and uh, that's it. So try to control yourselves, guys. <laughs> I know that you know it's gonna be okay. So let's get started. So first thing you need to learn about the opener. Mm -hmm. Is she playing? She's not gonna be playing now. Guys, just... Just enjoy, enjoy. Emote only, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Emote only, and I have uh, removed the chat from the screen because people are very distracting. Okay. Uh, so this is what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. First thing, when you enter the game, your sheep positioning is bad, and this might be something a lot of people think is like nitpicking or it's, oh, it's not that important. It is important because that's a basic. Mm -hmm. Just like producing villagers is basic. You can't tell someone, 
Oh, but it's okay if you skip villagers. Mm. I mean, sure, but you shouldn't learn that. So when you start a game, this is what you do. You're gonna select all six villagers, send them to the sheep, or actually, first you select TC. You start building, then you select six villagers. You move the sheep a bit, which you'll see what I'll do, and then you move your scout. Mm -hmm. So you start. See that? Mm -hmm. okay. And then your sheep is right under the TC. Also, don't click like this, because that misposition and click at the gate mm. yeah okay. then you can do yes. this you can go scout you can hotkey your stuff now do whatever you want when the sheep arrive try to spread them out a little bit and always try to kill sheep at least on start because once this sheep is depleted they're all gonna do the animation to kill the other sheep but if you pre-kill them yourself they're gonna instantly start gathering and villagers always go for uh, the sheep that are carcasses first and then the new ones. Mm -hmm. Then you do this. You go house mining camp. With scout you can scout around. So you go seven, three, and then you rally in wood which you, you know already. Um, so I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks with units that you can do. I have a question. Mm -hmm. How many do I run on to gold? Three. Three to gold and then on wood. Okay. Seven, three, Wood. Yeah, okay. seven three wood. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. So, uh, once you do that, I mean, there's not much to do. Like, you you want to avoid doing this. So sometimes, if the workers do that, or I pre manually split them because uh, sometimes what happens if the sheep is too close to the TC and we have seven villagers, one might not be able to get the sheep. Mm -hmm. So they're just gonna stand there. So you want to avoid having all villagers stack on one base because uh, yeah, this way, if I had all villagers. If I had all villagers on this one, three villagers would have to go around to drop off. Mm. This way, they're all next to it. See how they insta-drop? No movement, nothing. Or barely any. So, these are, again, these are minor things, but these are things that are super easy to fix. Like, you don't need to focus all game doing these things. You can just do it in yourself. You can also drop your sheep like this. Like, if you run past the TC. If the sheep are here, you run past the TC, and then the sheep are here, you just click them on the TC and they stop immediately. Or you can use the S key as well for stop. And then they arrive and I just do one of these. I feel like I should have my notepad. Can I go run? Are you gonna be able to follow though? Alright. Women getting in. Can I pause? Oh, I can pause. Okay. Uh, okay. So oh, yeah, because it's not multiplayer. So, first is select TC. So, select TC. Mm -hmm. And then um, I. You can just re watch this video. Yeah, 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 but I, I want to make sure that it's laid out. Select mm -hmm. TC. Mm -hmm. um, villages on food. Put, create villagers, yeah. six villagers on the sheep, and then you move the sheep. So the way you move the sheep, look, I, I can't unpause. So mm -hmm. if the she sheep, starting sheep is here. So yeah. you don't click the sheep and then click under TC. You click the sheep and you move it here, because then it's going to go around the TC. So it's going to be super close to it. All right. Okay. So move um, sheep. Okay. And then you select your scout and scout. And scout. And once you do that, then you can hotkey stuff, hotkey scout, hotkey TC, and then uh, always, always get the two sheep that are next to your TC. Okay, yeah. And then drop them off and then go again. You don't, no, 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 you, you don't, don't drop, drop them, them off, you, you just, just send them. them yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you find a sheep like here, for example, that's not your starting sheep, you can still send them. Okay. If they're early in the game, because the opponent cannot have scout that fast. Okay, then you put three on gold or you rally. Three Seven, three, and then rally in wood. Rally three on gold. Okay. And then wood. Mm -hmm. Let's go. So now you're going to build the landmark with three from the gold. So the moment you have 200, or yeah, 200 gold, you're going to build the landmark. And you're gonna put one more villager from that comes from TC building on the landmarks. So you wanna have four. Mm, okay. So you rally that villager basically to go help. Yeah. So three and then one from land from uh, TC. 
So what you're going to be doing, the build I'll be teaching you, is you're going to leave seven on food. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do it, be doing like minimum amount of readjusting because I don't want you to like uh, get too into like, oh, I got to execute this, right? This is extremely easy to execute and it's very like A to B kind of thing. So you're going to leave seven on food when you start aging up and then you're going to just rally on food. So now I have four on this. Once they finish, we'll see where I'll send them. So now I'm just rallying onto the wood. Another thing you can do to min-max is in, in instead of wait, just like with the sheep, you don't wait for them to finish. If you have time, you can just select for him to chop wood. It takes four chops to chop down. And they only start gathering once it's chopped. Yes, so it takes four chops to get down. So if you have three villagers, they will chop once and then they will all chop again. So it's... Again, again, you don't do this throughout the whole game, but early on it's pretty good to do. We're gonna build a house. Sure, probably uh, scouted because I'm gonna run out of sheep. <clears throat> so, next thing you do is with this villager that's rallied, you're gonna build barracks. So, the moment I have 150 wood. I'm gonna build barracks right here. Right next to it. Like, you don't need to go anywhere. Right next to it. Alright. You wanna have 10 on wood total. So, once the landmark finishes, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the guys that were building the landmark, you're gonna put them on the wood for a total of 10. You can actually go 11, go 11. So 11 on wood. And then you're gonna rally on stone. Still no roll. Still no no one back on roll. Yeah, not on roll. So the point of this build is with 7 on wood, you're gonna have enough to make a lot of units. And then you stop. So this is what you do. This one might return once backwards because you don't have enough, quite enough wood, but that's fine. Not a big deal. And with these, you're gonna attack. I'm gonna show you in replays after how you do the attack. So now we can build that. And now, because I'm basically out of food, I don't want to continue making units. I'm gonna take three and put them to stone. So I'm gonna leave four on food. So the point of this build is to put pressure on the opponent and then transition to second TC and then continue making units. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, so basically you just continue to make units until... Yeah, you'll see how many units exactly you'll make so you can make notes of those after. So the point of this build is that you put some pressure, you force your opponent not to make one production building. They have to make two. They have to make a production building for spearmen, which is archers, and production building for longbows, which is horsemen. Horsemen are more expensive than archers and spearmen, so they're investing more. And they also don't know when you're going to stop producing, so they're most likely going to overinvest, and you're going to get second TC faster. Okay. So, you stop... You just keep rallying. Mm -hmm. uh, you can rally until 8 is fine, on stone. And also make sure you do this. Replenish. You don't have wheelbarrow, so it's very important to do this. Yes, no, to make sure you do a second lumber camp. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Um, huh? yeah. So, once you do that, you can click on the stone, and when it's 8.50, you're done. From 1.2k to 850 is 350 stone. Mm -hmm. That's how much you need. So what I'm gonna do now, the moment you start building TC, okay. I'm gonna rally onto gold. All those, all those villages that are on the TC are the ones from stone. Yeah, eight. So look now. Now I'm gonna continue back. Look at my resources. The food is piling up again, so I'm gonna start making units again. And. You want to try and do this. This is not extremely important right now, but you want to try and do this. You take two villagers. You take two villagers, or three, it doesn't matter. The reason why you take two or three is because you take two shots. But if you take three, it's not a big deal. If they're right under TC, uh, it's bugged, so you can't properly kick them. But if they're like this, you can't. 
No, 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 you'll see what's going to happen. So, I'm going to st stop the thing here. So now when the TC finishes, you can click on their TC. Mm, okay. So the reason why you want to kill them is because this is going to happen. Your units are maybe going to try to get a deer here, and they're going to push these deer away. So again, this might not seem like a big deal, but instead of like gathering from here, which is very close, some people gather from here, which is not only open to raids, but it's very inefficient. So that's something you can do. And then this TC, you want to have like 10 on deer. So that if you get raided, you can just put 10 workers inside. You don't want to have more. And then you're going to rally one TC onto the gold until you get about eight and one TC onto the wood line. And then I'll show you in my games how I'm balancing and rebalancing the economy. From this point on, I don't have a proper build. Like that's that, that's the thing about AA4. You cannot, I cannot have like, okay, now you put 14 on this and 13 on this. Because I don't know what the opponent is doing, I don't know what I want to do. So I'll teach you how to, instead of teaching you uh, 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 A to B until castle, I'll teach you how to adjust your economy properly. So, uh, another thing you can do, this can come in handy, I'm gonna bring this units back. Always have longbows in one control group, and then scouts and spears in the other. Because you need to focus fire with longbows like almost always it's always better to focus on unless you have like 60 longbows obviously then don't but um yeah you always want to keep longbows in this formation unless you're fighting like 30 longbows versus 30 archers then you can do this because longbows versus archers you overkill a lot so if you do a line formation you're gonna do way more dps in the long run so, um, and if you kite in line formation, you like you kite like this. So you shoot, you move, shoot, you move. Never do this in a line formation. You see what happens? Like not even, not even like that. You need to, you need to. If the army is here, you need to position like this, and then you need to kite. So if the army is here, you can position like this, and then shoot because your units. If the line is even bigger, they're gonna just start rotating, which. Yeah, and this obviously creates problems. Another thing, which is not important for right now, but it's good to know, if the opponent is attacking from here, if you ever need to turn, you remove formation and you engage it again. Okay, question about the fact that, because now there's a lot of wood, but there was wood piling up earlier as well. Are those for the rams? If he is not reacting well enough and you took out some of his army, that's the way you react. You see, okay, I need to make a, a thing thing, what is that, a blacksmith? get upgrade you'll see that in games okay mm. so whenever you play an another thing you can use so this will come useful at a point so let's say you had three longbows three longbows can defend the knight without moving but you need to do it properly so the way you do it properly is you take one longbow a french knight anyone? And you place them like this. We'll move these away so you can see. This does 25 damage and stuns for 2.5 seconds. So if you're like this, the knight cannot go in without taking damage. So not only it's going to get stunned, it's going to take 25 damage. And you can also shoot him with workers and the knight is going to die. Even if he kills one of your longbows, it's extremely not efficient to do this. Like, no player should do this. If you have even more, if you have like six, like the knights cannot go in. And even if they do, they're going to take massive damage. And French players cannot afford to take that much damage. So you can do something like this. That's like a special note one. Equipment. Yeah, yeah, this is just like, again, for you to know how to use palaces properly. Yeah, because I had no idea. So, also, like, if there's ever a point where you don't have cover, you can put a spearman. So, let's say knights can come through here. So, I have three palaces, let's say, on this side, and three on this side. This is like trying to get the most out of your units. So, basically. If, so I have palisades here, palisades here, so you can put a spearman here and he will he's already bracing, he will stun if the knight comes. So now if you're right? Yeah, V is holding. So it's not gonna move. So now if you mine like this. 
Obviously the, the workers yes, were inside earlier again. now because mm -hmm. I moved them now they're derping. But either yeah. way. Yeah. So Yeah. Another thing is whenever like if you see you're gonna get surrounded, like you see the knights are coming or horsemen or whatever, and you can't defend. Don't just click palisades like this. A lot of people do that, and the knights come from behind and kill you. Like just do. You can even click two, and then you can click two like this. Yeah. So this is already way better than just clicking Q. Yeah, and it doesn't take a lot. You can even do it in. in uh, I mean, now there's cooldowns, but you can even do it in two. Like you can click Q and then turn around five and do it again, and it puts spears here. Um, another thing, when you kite, so horsemen are gonna or knights are gonna try to get on your longbows. When you kite, your spears are an A move. You don't touch them, and then you just. Shoot, rotate, shoot, rotate, shoot, rotate. Don't run away from your spears. This is a mistake a lot of people make, even pro players. You let your spearman aim move, and you rotate your longbows around the spearman. Do as much damage as you can. Don't well, the spearmen are hitting the whole time. Yeah. You're gonna get hit more, but he's gonna get hit by the spearman. So, it's worth it for you. So, these are all basics. Another thing is if you're getting raided, so let's say you have palaces and you're getting raided. Take the villagers, shoot, and then move. Then shoot. Villagers have an attack speed of 3.38. So F, like you can shoot and then move, and then shoot and then move. And also, if the knight is ever here, let's say he's about to attack your villagers, insta garrison these so they start shooting. Okay. And then if these can run, shoot, because there will be a point. There's always a point where the knight goes, it hits you, your unit's garrison, and the knight keeps running in, and there's a point where he's gonna turn around. Mm -hmm. So once you get a feel for where that point is, you can just stand and shoot, even though he's technically attacking you. Because if he kills a villager for one knight, that's not worth it. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, at a, at a high level, people don't just die with knights to kill villagers, because you're gonna die to a counter push. Okay. So, yeah. Do you have any questions for that? Mm -mm. That's a lot. I actually, like, I have... These are all very basic things that you should practice, especially, like, the, the beginning of it. Mm. Because this is something that you do every game. No matter what happens, you will do it every game. So it's extremely important to get it down. And this is why, like, for example, like, a Diamond player, or even a Conquer 1, gets their age up at, like, let's say, 240, but we get it at, like, 228. And that might not seem like a lot, but when a longbow appears in your base 12 seconds faster, you can lose a lot of villagers because yeah, of it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Especially, like, this is the thing. In, in lower leagues, where you're going to be playing and ranking up, these people have no clue about timings. So your longbows, even if you executed poorly the attack itself, mm -hmm. will arrive way faster. And then you get them off the gold, and you get them off. And then it all and, and people fall apart. People fall apart at high level, and people are also going to fall apart at low level because they're not used to it, so they don't know how to adjust. And then you just have a big lead. So what I'm going to do with this whole thing is I'm going to focus on the early aggression. Yeah. So this is this is like how competitive play is. And again, I know you're not. I turned off the emote only. Please behave. Okay. Um, this is how competitive gameplay is. Uh -huh. It's never like. Yeah, there's some builds that you go naked um, TC, but most of it is like you poke and then you second TC. You poke and then you castle. Because if you don't, the opponent can do whatever they want and you're just staying defensive and doing nothing. And there's, like, this defends against most things because a second TC is like a chunky defensive structure. Well, there's also that, but the, the whole meta rushing castle and just auto winning is not a thing anymore. Okay. Because even if they rush castle, your longbows will kill the villagers on gold, mm -hmm. and then he's gonna have to make units anyway. So the whole idea at the pro play is why not just make units first? Okay. If you're gonna have to make ah. units to defend, why not just make units? I just saw you in action with all of that. That is so cool. What you just oh, yeah, the split? to me. Yes, yes. So now that first sheep, like your first sheep when I watch you is here. Mm. And that, like, you know, that's like 20 feet per minute less. Okay. But over time in the game that's a yeah. lot and yeah it's something that um like a lot of people think like oh but you don't need it right now it's like technically you don't but if you're learning how to walk you should learn how to walk the proper, proper way, way and not like fall and you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so 
If you have any questions at any point, feel free to ask. Um, so yeah, here I go for the scouting. When the sheep second sheep arrived, I insta killed it. But you can see all the villagers are right under the TC, chilling. And you always want to make sure you have enough sheep so you don't run out. So you stay here, like this is really safe, so I don't need to drag them under. You can click if you want on the TC so they speed up, but... We'll take them to the gate. Yeah, so look the now. Gates of death. <laughs> so I put hold or stop position and I just take a couple of villagers and just kill them in different spots. What sometimes I do is I put sheep too stacked and I kill them and then if I have 10 on food they can't gather even though there's like five sheep because mm -hmm. I stack the sheep too much. So now I try to actively split them a bit so that that doesn't happen. You can see I kill all of them, but you don't need yeah. to kill all. You can you at can least have here. three, four dead, so that now I don't need to pay attention to it at all. That is like efficient, and that's done. Okay. And now we go until there's seven on food, and we go on to gold. Alright, I'll on put this so you can see in the top. Mm -hmm. Ah, seven three. You're not fucking around. So now again, I'm chopping this one. Next one is gonna chop another wood, so you know. And then we go. And then we have. Oh yeah, here th this first game I wanted to do something else, and then I changed my mind. So this build is a bit fucked, but the point is explain the build. <laughs> I see. And um, I want to show you the the attacking. Yeah, so you can see I changed my mind, and then I went four, and then yeah. So when you scout. With this build, you need to know where you're gonna attack. You can't show up here and be like, oh, there's a TC. You when you scout, you need to understand where to attack. So you need to have a game plan okay. in can, the game. Can I can I tell you what my game plan would have been if I scouted him? Can you sure. tell me why? I haven't not? scouted him yet, but yeah. Okay. So this is okay, so your game plan depends from sieve to sieve. Ooh, that guy is sending a little bit. Oh yeah, so I don't know what he was... I guess he was going to make a tower. I don't okay. know. So, each sieve uh, works on a certain resource that's higher priority than others. Yeah. So, that's something you'll learn through game plan. That's something that you can ask me. But, in general, every sieve has a, 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 a go-to, kind of, to attack yeah. into. So, in French, we're looking at the goal. Mm-hmm. Okay. For English versus English, we're looking at wood. English versus okay, English versus English is very specific. You're probably not going to be making spearmen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can understand that. Yeah, okay. so you can just go longbows and gold. And you might need to continuously make longbows because yeah. that that so that matchup is very unique, and I think that's the only matchup where you can do this build. Okay. Like exactly like yeah, this. But it's just I, not gonna but work. All the small things you told me still works. And yeah, I, I yeah. The wood. build itself will will. Figure out. I would target his woods unless he has a mill, which is basically an inferior real estate for harassment. Right? For English? Yeah. And yeah, I'm... for English, I mean, attacking the wood is the best, but it also can be pretty hard. Yeah, okay. Let me just see. Wood or mill. And what is their Delhi? Delhi? Do you know what you go for? Berries. Wouldn't they be on berries by then? But... You want to go for gold oh. because you want to delay their scholar production hey, so nice. because they're uh, healing. And their upgrades depend on it. And Abba? Abba said you go for stone because they're always going to second TC. If mm -hmm. you can't go stone, you go for wood. If you can't go for wood, you go for whatever. Okay. Stone, wood, whatever. No. Um, Marlian's not gold. What? I'm saying Marlian's not gold, mage tier. So Marlian's. Gold. Oh, their the whole sieve is based on gold. Oh yeah, you would attack the little uh, buildings around the gold, yeah. right? Yes, okay. So yeah, gold. because but they need not... gold. So the meta with Malins right now, which I'm assuming in lower leagues they do it as well. Yeah. They rush castle. So they need gold for castle and they can oh. also produce cows from gold. So they need gold. Okay, so they always need gold. Yeah, yeah. I, I get no, they need gold, but when I have longbows, are my longbows gonna be able to deal with Marlian's little buildings, or do I send? You don't kill with... buildings with longbows. Yeah, you kill workers and you put spearmen on uh, okay. things. Okay. Yep. Then Marlians, and we have Ottomans. What about the Ottomans? Mm, I mean, preferably for you go for stone first and then woodline. 
And this is stone wood. They're kind of like Abbasid. But they want stone for military school, not for TC. Okay, China. China? China, you go on berries, which is funny how it works. Not because they necessarily need berries, but because um, they use imperial officials to, mm, to get... Yeah, so they put all that's... the sheep under mill. So if you deny that, their food's fucked. Mm. Um, for China, you can go berries or stone is really good as well. So they also always go a second TC? Yeah. Um, At least that's the matter right now. Mongols? Um, Mongols, you go for gold. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and what other stuff is there? Hurry gold. Yeah. Well, gonna... Golden wood. Okay. All right. Okay. Now even. Is that it? Yeah, I believe so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Yeah. What are we missing? Rus. Oh. Yeah, and with Rus, good. so Rus didn't used to need gold, but now it needs Rus. Oh, you yes. go for stone and stone, gold, wood. Okay. Stone, gold, wood. Okay, so basically everything. Whatever is safe. I'll put well, that was their safe. food is under T, so you can go for that. Yeah. Also for... Well, we'll talk about that more. But okay. Rus goes for boars. You need to be aware where boars are. Mm -hmm. See, this is why I tell people, it, you can't... Uh, if you want to improve fast, I would advise people to like, stick with one sieve. Do you see how much detail there is? This is just the first thing to attack. This is not including sieve bonuses and everything else. Like, this is just... And some people might think, again, this is too much info. This is basic. This, this is like... This is not even advanced. She, I'm just telling her what to attack with the first attack and what to deny. So I'm scouting here. My units are already on the way. So the moment... My units are building, I'm sending them across the map. Yeah. So I think that I always get asked, but I'm scared to attack because... And I'm like, because what? And they're like, well, they might have units. How? He's age one still. De Delhi uh, age up is a bit delayed, although this guy was a bit delayed uh, more than usual. I think it was Conquer too. And... What a noob. So even <laughs> if relax. he's age two, you can still push because mm. if you don't push, he won't make units. You have mm. to push for him to make units. You need him to spend if you arrive stuff. here and he already has units to kill you, you fucked up something yeah. because it is not possible for English to age up, make units, and the opponent doesn't have units to kill you. That's not possible okay. because uh, <laughs> just the way the game works. Your longbows, you get basically free military building. Your longbows are cheap, produce fast, and you make spearmen. There's no other sieve except French that gets free military production feudal and French knights are more expensive so okay. they cannot have more. Okay, so now I'm scouting and I'm seeing, like I'm looking at the potential. I'm like, okay, this is potential. I can put my scout here, attack with longbows, right? Bears are in the back. They're almost dried up. So yes. while Delhi bears are a good place to attack, this is kind of already done and it's in the back. If this was here, I obviously go for it. I do a little drive by. Yeah. But because it's not there, I don't want to go all the way around to attack berries. Mm. So I'm searching for gold. Now again, if berries were like here, I'll attack them to force them off and then I'll go to gold. Yeah. So now I scout. I see, okay, the gold's right there. This is Tower of Victory. You know what it does? Mm -mm. It, 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 it Your infantry attacks 20% faster. And with this build, you need four on gold. That's all you gotta know oh. for scholars. So this build is very gold heavy. Okay, because you don't get the cheap scholars anymore. Not just. Yeah, because yeah, your scholars are 150 gold, so you need yeah. four on gold. So he ages up, he goes on gold. I know. I know he's gonna go on gold, so I go immediately there. What is he doing with those? Is that like a normal thing to build, to build walls? If you're going that way? I, I don't know why he's going walls. You. Yo. This is what I mean. This is what I mean. If you're gonna go again, I pose the question. If you're gonna go walls, why not just make units? Yeah, yeah. Because now he's made these walls, which by the way, you can't wall off, especially on open maps. You can't yeah, wall off your whole map. So now look what happens. He's gonna lose a villager. He's gonna wall this, which this is about 90 wood. He, I'm assuming, tried to wall this whole map, which is probably another 120, 130. That's two production buildings almost. 
Yeah. Might as well make some units. Because the funny thing is with this build, you're supposed to make units anyway. Okay. Like you're supposed to mass units. And this is what I mean so with... So he was wrong. Static defense can be good, yeah. but in general, active units will, will almost always be better. Because you can actually use them, you can look pressure with them. A static building is just defensive and it's just... Yeah, and there's good. always space to attack. Uh -huh. Like, even... Let's say he wall this off and this off, right? Mm -hmm. I Eventually he will chop through here. I can just put my longbows here. He didn't do anything there. Yeah. If he goes to the other side, I'll put my longbows here. Okay, now... I know this is like maybe jumping the gun, but when you feel like, okay, this guy's fucked, I'm just gonna go for the kill, you don't necessarily have to overcommit to losing any units. You can bring, you can age up, live your best life, and then push up. Oh. Uh, but I'm asking, when do I bring villagers, and from what do I bring villagers well, in this case? Well, if, if you're if having a serious, units? with the second push, you can bring a villager per tower. Okay. Like right now, uh, I don't need to build a tower for yeah, five hey, minutes. It's not really worth yeah. it. But if I'm going for a second push, you can, mm -hmm. right? It's always good to do so. But this is another thing that a lot of people like don't realize. You don't need to kill your opponent. If I have an army that's bigger than his and I go around his base, he's dead already. Because mm -hmm. he doesn't have any resources. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if I'm not killing anything, he's not gathering. So right here, he has to run. So I'm already ahead here. And this is actually pretty bad for him, for this build specifically. So right now, he is already behind. He can't produce units. Well, see, this, this is the oh, funny yeah. part. Now he makes archer range. Yeah, so I why think... not make archer range immediately? Less and put smaller inside and produce archer. But now he's gonna age up and then he won't have food slash uh, wood for archers because he has used so much. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, two idle villagers here building the whole, or three, sorry. Plus, oh, that's the three. Th plus the three that were at the top building this thing. So actually. villagers are 40 resources per minute mm -hmm. gathering rate with no upgrades. So this means that he has lost 90 wood on this and 120 in the minute Fair he minute. was building this. Wow. That's pretty crazy. So again, if he made an archer range, that's an archer range plus like two, three archers. What he did here. Yeah. And it didn't protect anything because he lost the gold anyway. Okay. Again, in some situations, like if this was the only thing he needed to wall to protect this whole side, yeah, you wall this for sure. Yeah. yeah. But this, at this point, oh, he's even making a gay, which is another twenty-five. Yeah. Wall. But at this point, this is way too much. If he made this, I wouldn't mind it, um, because it makes me go all the way around. Yeah, it buys him time, whatever. I can see that being useful. But yeah, like for me in this situation, if I made a wall here, that's worth it because I'm cutting off so much of the map, mm. um, but not instantly. You make some units first, but it does. It's not. Doesn't make sense for me to wall this whole thing yeah, off because it's just way too much. Might as well and then he's gonna put the units here and here, and I'm out of wood anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'll show yeah, you from my point of view. Done. I'm just what dropping off sheep quickly. So now I'm going for second PC behind it. Yes, sir. I had to go farm super early because I didn't find any sheep. He vacuumed all the sheep. That puts you at a disadvantage, but he's at such a, like a disadvantage of making more units or making a second PC, but he's so far behind, it doesn't matter. Well, the thing is, even in Conqueror level, it's five long was in two spearmen. How many archers do you make? You can't make five, because long was, so, so you need eight or nine. Plus, if I micro my long was, we might actually trade. If we trade, I'm ahead because he made eight and I made five. How much further is the range for longbows? I actually don't know. Seven tiles, and we'll see how much the archers. I think archers are six. Oh, he's moving his. So now, the yeah. So now, because I press this, like I'm doing nothing, right? So yeah. might as well be active. So I go on berries. Okay, I don't see anything. Here's archer. Oh, it's five. So it's two tile range. So you can kite pretty effectively. I see the archer, I'm like, I'll take that. Three. And now, let's let's take a look at his economy. He's now literally just, like, in defensive mode, trying to get wood instead of... Well, the saddest part is, if I was actually all in it, this is, like, bad, but it's not that bad. But I'm actually going economy. Like, yeah. I'm not even all in it, and he's already in such a bad spot that... Like the lead will just kind of uh, continue. 
So I'll uh, I'll show you from my point of view. Mm -hmm. So yeah. now I'm bringing the scout. I am checking. So I took him off the gold. I took him off the berries. So now what I'm doing is I'm checking other golds. And wouldn't it be worth it to put like let's say two longbows on his gold at this point to just check that he doesn't go back? Yeah, no, wait, because if he has three horsemen, I lose both of them. Okay, but he doesn't have. Oh, that thing, the tower victory can produce horsemen. No, no, no. Oh. You can just make stables. Oh, okay. Like, you're not gonna be always aware. Oh, okay, okay. Like, these units together are very strong. Like, yeah. he he cannot run horsemen into this. If these spears are not there, he can just kill me with two, three horsemen. Mm -hmm. So, I check gold on this side. And now I see the full wall. Which is like, not out. good. Okay. So, I see both goals. And these spawns are very nice, because both goals are here. So, it's very easy for me to check. So what do I do? I just rotate. No, you're last. I just rotate around to my goal. Mm -hmm. I'm not over committing. I'm not trying I'm to kill. Day, I see here he overchopped. I said overchopped because this tree was protecting that. So now I know. Okay, I can rotate and I can poke from here. You, you can't poke from the right side because it's like. I mean, I could, but then my units are stuck. Yeah. He can leave with his scholars outside, and the gold is yeah. uh, open. But if I stand here, I can quickly rotate to gold. So. Now Delhi is going for the sacred sites. Mm -hmm. Well, not oh. yet. His upgrade's not done, but he is going for sacred sites. So I see that. I see a scholar here. I see two archers. I see a scholar here. So my reaction to that is I'm going to produce a spearman immediately, send it to this sacred site, because my units are closer to these two. So I can potentially defend that those sacred sites with these units, and I can just put one spearman here. Yeah, and you will take out as military units as they pump out. No, he, well, he's just sending Scholar, and I yeah. see that. I see that the archers are still in base, so I can see that he's sending it alone. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to yeah, yeah. delay the cap or not let him cap. I put Scout on this one, because again, he need, I'm forcing him to send units out on the map. Yeah. And if he does, I can attack his gold or I can pick him up. Mind you, he doesn't know where my units are. Yeah. So this Scout is not in, it's not in position at all. So he has no idea where my units are. I, you can click the gold, so I don't need to go in the vision of the thing. Mm -hmm. I can click, you can see the and I can see that it's not mined at all. Mm -hmm. My PC is going down, back in my base. I'm slowly going to be adding farms. Like I said, I had really low sheep count this game, so these farms are earlier than I would have liked. So I'm checking around, I'm, again, I'm rotating, seeing where I can do damage. I wanted to go kill this one, but then he just ran, uh, ran away, no, so I was like, fuck it. Okay. Yardway. And now... Back? Sorry. Are you going back now for a rack? Yeah. So now that my second TC is done, I'm going to start producing units again. I'm putting here voila, until I have 10 on uh, deer, mm -hmm. like I told you. And then I'm going to rally onto the gold, like 6 to 8, depending how many men at arms you want to commit to. And then rally back onto the wood. Now. You, you can make men at arm longbow against any sieve. You do want to mix in spears if they have cavalry. Against French, you can go pure spear. Pure spear longbow. You don't need to, because they're so reliant on cavalry. You need to make sure you have enough spears. But against sieves like Delhi, like Abbasid, making men at arms, uh, it's extremely hard for them to kill it. Okay, because they don't actually have any crossbows to take care of them, right? Uh, what they can do it with archer and horsemen, the problem is you have longbows so you can kill his mm -hmm. archers. Mm -hmm. So, this is why English is so strong, because if you manage to get this position, you force your opponent to stay in feudal, which you have men at arms and longbows, and they have horseman archer, so you can have a few spearmen okay. and then you're good to go. So, now, because I harassed, he brings his army, so I see his army. So I know I can go here a little bit. I see an archer. Like, I pick that off. I go in, I pick off another archer. Look, he's panicking. This is extremely bad. Like doing this big of a pull. Because this is again wasted resources. Now he comes to attack me. I use spearmen to just absorb some damage from the the, the archers. Because I don't need spearmen. I am, I'm aware he has no horsemen. So spearmen are okay to die in this situation. Yeah, but that's still like. What's her face? Like, watch, watch the fight. Oh, yeah, okay. 
and you're trying to do a little bit more damage than that. Mind you, he has 20% attack speed, so he has landmark that boosts the archers in this book. Traded the worst. Kai's gonna clean that up, and he's capturing sacred sites. Okay. So now I'm fully set up, I'm gonna add another barracks, and I'm gonna start pumping out units more and more. Okay. Yeah, there's no horsemen, so I'm just gonna mass meta on longbow. If there was horsemen, I would probably do two spearmen and then men at arm. But because there's none. So now I know that the last time I saw the army was here. So I go to recapture the sacred site. So from a Carlson's perspective, they would maybe look at this and be like, oh, he's in a good position. He is like, he's got the army, he's got all the agents in play with the villages. No, he is, he's dead. Yeah, yeah, but I know, but yeah, yeah. yeah, most people would say, oh, he's pretty Yeah, dead. because now I'm producing units here. If you think about it, I haven't produced a unit for past like four minutes. Yeah, yeah. That was all starting units. And, right and he's been producing for a while now. And now because I have better eco, I'm on deer and I'm on farms. Now my my food economy is really really if you compare. You still don't have a wheelbarrow, question about that. So wheelbarrow meta has changed a bit because so wheelbarrow for English farms is actually not good at all. It, it, the efficiency of wheelbarrow is different depending on which resources you're on. So wheelbarrow for gold is actually the worst because you move the least. Yeah. So the more you move, the better wheelbarrow is. So wheelbarrow is really good for woodlands and it's really good for like deer if they're farther away or for bears. English doesn't go on bears. For farms, wheelbarrow is like, I think it's like three or 4% uh, increase in the economy, which is not a lot. No, it's not worth it. Not with that initial investment. No, it's not worth it for sheep. Sure it's not worth it for gold. Yes, so the only thing it's worth it is for wood. But you just both close and close it. Right? Yeah, and I'm gonna get wheel bear in a second. So okay. I prioritized wood upgrade. Oh, really? You can watch these replays as well after yeah. or VOD or whatever. But wood upgrade goes first because now I'm gonna go like mass longbow, so I need that. Okay, I'm getting. Uh, so this is another thing. So most of the time you want to get steel the arrow first. Yeah. But because I'm going for mass at arm, and his comp is pure archer, I know that. He has nothing else. Yeah, I go for the armor is. first, because yeah. the man at arms will, will be literally unkillable. Mm -hmm. But if he had spearman uh, or sorry, horseman archer, I would probably go for steel the arrow first. Okay. I would I'm just gonna point out this is where I would fall apart. Like even if I was ahead, if I did some damage here, I wouldn't know how to follow it up. And I think you just explained that perfectly. I now you'll see. So I'm getting my army. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, a lot of people ask again, how do you know when to attack? Well, when you play enough games, I know already in the game that this game is over. Even if he captures three sacred sites, I can kill him right now. He cannot defend. It's just it's just not possible. It's one of those things for me. Uh when, again, when you have an ex experience, when people ask, imagine if I ask you. What would you do if five knights show up two minutes into the game? You're gonna be like, that's not, it's not possible. For me, it's also not possible for him to defend this. Unless I move command my units into his, there is no way that he wins a fight. Like, literally zero. So, because all the moving that he's done, his scholars were delayed, which means his upgrades were delayed, everything's just fucked. So now I just start recapturing sacred sites, and when, uh, in a bit, I'm just gonna go for it. And if you look at the unit count, earlier he had way bigger unit count, and now it's equal. But you're not, you're not letting on. Like, come to my base, come to my base, kind of thing. Well, I, I decapture this one, or I just send a long in case he sends something. Mm. I see scholars on this one, and now I can go. So. Did you wait for the upgrade? Yeah, yeah. Just pop. Yeah, so now it's finished, and now my men at arms have 4 armor, and his longbows have 5 damage. Mm -hmm. So if we do some simple maths, that is not a lot of damage. It's a very thing to do. So now, what you can do in this situation, you just aim with your men at arms, mm -hmm. and you micro your longbows. And this is why it's important to have separate groups. So look now, I shift you initially, you can see the red arrow. Mm -hmm. So when he pokes my longbows, I start running. Oh, Look how much damage he's taking from the man at arms. So he is focusing so hard, so now he splits off two. I don't know if he sent them on purpose to build or to like get away. So now obviously I don't want this many men at arms chasing, so I take some and send them back. And 
you can see that fight, maybe the army supply was even, but that was not an even fight. Mm. So now, I send one unit. I don't send five to decap. One is more than enough. And now I can just chase him down with a move. And now, I insta rally everything forward to end the game. Or to do more damage. So I'm gonna bring a villager, I think, in a bit as well to build a tower. Which is, you ask, when is the right time to go? This is a good time to build a tower. He can't really stop it. So what you can do now, and this is this is multitasking and multitasking. Look, he's rushing castle, thinking like that's the savior. Uh, multitasking is a lot harder to learn, but it pays off way more. So, for example, what I'm doing right now, I'm decapping okay. this. Obviously, I'm doing the macro stuff. I shift Q. So you hold shift. You, I moved here, here, and then you hold shift and A move here. So what that's gonna do is they're gonna go here, here, and then once they're here, they're gonna be aggro. So the reason why you don't just A move and then A move because they're gonna get the stuck on this. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and also Absolutely. they attack from the proper angle. If mm -hmm. you attack from here, they're gonna maybe get into DC range or whatever. So, and I don't pay attention to those, yeah. that's done. And the best part is if there's villagers, they're gonna try to kill them and then attack mining camp, so they're safe. Okay. Then, I see this. So instantly, what is my goal now? <clears throat> at this point in the game, he's obviously made scholars, he's used up gold. I mean, I am attacking gold. But you need to stop food. If you stop food, there's no age up and there's no military. Yeah. So now what I do is I should scout these things, this. Bears in the back are gone, I know that. I don't know how many sheep he has left. And then bear is here because there's nowhere else to go. Because he's on bear is here, that tells me he's either running out of sheep or he ran out of sheep. Because why else would you be out on the map? Yeah, especially when you know he has all of them. Yeah, so <coughs> <coughs> once I push this off, I know that I need to check this next because there's nowhere else to get food. So Actually, one of the guys asked me if I'm map hacking earlier because. No, it was this guy! Oh. He told me I'm map hacking. So, the reason he told me I'm map hacking is because I always attack where his villagers were. Because it's obvious, like, if I get you off of the food here, you have to go here. Or here. There's nowhere else for you to get food. <clears throat> so I see some buildings here. I'm not, not interested. It's gonna spend... I'm gonna spend too much time trying to kill that. So what I do is I leave one man at arm. I don't chase him with the whole army and then try to break this gate. I leave one man at arm. That's all you need. Here, I'm waiting for the tower to finish. I have two men at arms here. I see nothing of gold. You can also see the deer. They're all alive. Nothing's happened. He's like, I'm castle, I'm fine. I'm decamping this with a sent three because he had uh, two scholars standing on it. Mm -hmm. And now I see he castle. The moment I see the castle, I know that he he is like steering for resources right now. And the moment someone hits castle, you need to attack them. That that's this is like your perfect chance to attack and do damage because he just spent 10 in the, this guy spent 27 but people spend 10 15 20 villagers to age up so that means while he was aging up he wasn't gathering anything and he spent all that resources he should have been spending on units so not all, yeah so not only he spent 1.2k for 600 gold he also spent another 500 to 1000 resources aging up by mm. being idle okay. so i know that resource wise i have a massive lead uh, and if you look at the units, I have more men at arms than he has uh, archers, which are cheaper. Yeah. So now I just go for it. So where am I attacking? I'm attacking whatever can be used to produce the units. So yeah. gold and food. Mm -hmm. Castle, that's what you go for. You don't go for wood at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm walking through here because it's close. But I'm searching for food and gold. So I go in here. This is all his workers. Yes. Um, 38, yeah, he has 40. So there's all his workers. So now, I see this many workers, and you can select them in-game. Yeah. You know that he cannot have 50 workers at this point. Yeah. So I know these are all of his workers. Yeah, so just aim. Men at arms are not taking any damage. I'm picking up the archers. And now he's just losing units. And he's like, oh shit, is this way you talk to me? Not a matter of later. So I decap this, so he has no gold income. 
So now this goes kind of from bad to worse. I'm just farming these. The PCs don't do enough damage to clear this super fast. And I'm still killing workers. <clears throat> so what did I do? The moment he ca hit castle, you have two options. You either keep producing units uh -huh. or you stop and go castle. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I made two sets of farms and I pulled them from wood because I had a lot of wood. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to make another set of farms. I just stopped producing units. I keep producing um, workers, of course. I'm checking for food here. Nothing. So I know, okay, he's he's a mega fuck. Like he has no food gathering right now. This is not gathering. Those are not gathering. So I know that I can't die to counter attack. There's nothing to kill me. So I don't need to panic produce units now. I can also wall because I I'm not again I had so many workers in wood I had like 20 something so I used all that to make farms and then the rest of the wood I just used to make walls mm -hmm. this is just securing the win because sometimes knights can get in and be annoying this is just securing the win at that point. and second night because I have so much eco that at 15 minutes spending this much wood is not that much, yeah. but spending it six minutes is a lot. Now, if you're gonna edge up, yeah, you would edge up with uh, keep instead of a TC. No, oh, okay. just to be safe. Well, like you the keep one also. is like I rarely, rarely go for it because okay. where let's say let's say you had a bit more units, where would you make a keep? On one of the sacred sites, I guess, or closer to his base. That's too know? risky. The knights yeah. come and kill it. So where would oh, you make okay. it in your base? In your base, I don't know. In your base, you wouldn't make it. There's, there's no wrong answer because all the answers are wrong. Yeah. So if you make it here, he's just gonna go here. Yeah. If you make it here, he's just gonna attack your gold. If you make it here, he's just gonna attack your farms. So that landmark is not very built very much because it can always be avoided. Like just don't attack into it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so now, because I'm transitioning, I'm not making any units. So what I do with uh, my longbows, a lot of people go back and save units. But then the knights come, and then you have shit units, and you trade inefficiently. Yeah. So what you should do is what I'm doing here. You just go around and kill villagers. <laughs> you're going to lose all these. That's fine. They're feudal units, and they're longbows. And you're going to need crossbows, spearmen, men at arms from now on. Longbows are still OK, but so this is what I do. I just try to be annoying. I have a man at arm here patrolling. I'm gonna check with these longbows for the gold here and deer. <clears throat> and I'm sending these other ones to the right corner. I didn't scout this, so I went to see if there's like berry patch or something. Because he's still not gathering food anywhere. Yeah, how's he getting any food? He has 17 Wow, well, this is the part where you said I'm hacking. So again, I'm just picking your villagers. And yeah, I'm gonna when lose you these. Think about it. Like, you went, you, it was obvious what he was doing. Uh, well, I didn't know there was farms, but yeah. like I'm, I'm running around checking. So again, I have some longbows here. Yeah. So what do I do? He thinks he's safe. I just heard the message. This is where he said, "Are you happy?" So back at home, what do we got? I rallied a shit ton of TCs of food on gold because I have 50 on uh, food. I should have pulled these villagers earlier mm -hmm. on uh, wood. So why am I rallying on gold? Because I'm making pure gold units. I'm going for man at arms, I'm going for upgrades, and I'm going for crossbows. So I don't need as much wood anymore. Oh, look at that disparity between the... Yeah, yeah, I overdid it on food this game. I should have moved these to... Um... Yeah, I'm like, I mean that with uh, the, the population. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you look at the income per minute. So now, this is another thing. English is kind of like Zerg for StarCraft. Uh, where, right now, all these units will actually trade extremely inefficiently. Mm -hmm. So I ran in, and what did I find out? Oh, found out he has crossbows, men-at-arms, second TC. I found out his next farm position, which I saw earlier. I found out he's not mining gold because I was just there. Find out how many relics he has. And again, I split up a couple of units down there. And just go make Even if I kill one village or two, at this with these economies and lose four men at arms is worth it. So 
like when people ask what's worth to sacrifice for a villager it depends what point in the game you are like with this economy i can't spend my food right now i'm producing from five barracks triple tc and i have too much food so that's the eco i messed up and my question about that at the bottom he's going with crossbow men men at arms so what do you go what is your response to that longbow just pure, no not long no okay. pure, pure crossbow oh you arms. also go crossbow. with this eco honestly it doesn't matter okay you can just make you like i can make i can go man at arm longbow because mm -hmm. my man at arm will beat his because of the chat armor mm -hmm. Uh, I can go, so man at arm uh, longbow and I can snipe crossbows with longbows. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go some man at arms and, and mass crossbow because crossbows will beat crossbows and man at arms. At this point you can go mass horsemen because mass horsemen can outrun man at arms, it can beat crossbows. So okay. all those things are possible. So just make stuff. That's what you're saying. Magic. Um, well, as long as you're not like making spears is dead, like it doesn't counter either. So then you just like. So now, because my unit comp is more uh, melee focused, as I was aging up, because I knew it was going to make a lot of men at arms, I went for plus one, plus one. Here, I should have probably gone for uh, this and this instead of this, because I didn't have a lot of uh, range units at the moment. Also, if you want keep. Try to avoid taking this and putting them on stone. Try to avoid taking this and putting them on stone. The only thing you're gonna do by that is get stone 20 seconds faster, but you're gonna ruin your wood economy. And then you're dragging villagers the whole time. So when you have enough, I definitely have enough on food, probably even too many. Well, I just moved these, so the economy is gonna rebalance itself a bit. Just rally onto the stone if you wanna make a keep. With three TCs, yeah. Okay. And now... Yeah. Now it doesn't matter. Again, I'm just, I'm not trying to win the fight, I'm just killing his workers. So I'm sending men at arms down there. The long bows are... If you look, long bows are shift queued onto the things. This is why it's important to have them in separate control group, so you don't do the SNA move or crossbows with men at arms. Because they they want to be attacked in the front line. So what I need to go do now is perfect the first five minutes of the game and then do the rest of what you just said and then move on to Yeah. We've been going an hour, but we'll do this one too because it's. Oh, uh, really? I played these two games so that I can show you. Really? Yeah. Oh. Oh. I was telling people earlier how demotivated I am right now because there's nothing to practice for. But then I was motivated to do well in these games, Aww. so I can do it properly so that you can. Hey, what are you owing? This is a coaching lesson. I just love the fact that like I'm with someone who would play English games for me just so you can teach me later. Ten out of ten. Would 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 date again. Look at that sheep. See how it Ooh, moved? It's close to that thing. Alright. Okay, now you So this is Abbasid, mm -hmm. and it's a good thing that we had a different matchup. So obviously all these, and again, I know for a lot of people, all these for for me are basics, like the build. How to balance your eco? Uh huh. Who are you cackling? I love it because it's like dating your students is poor form. <laughs> right. <laughs> Marika is pay to win. <laughs> She's wham to win. Uh, uh, yeah, what's it that's... called? Quetta. My brain just farted. Let me put my glasses back on so I can contain. <sighs> oh, yeah. So, like, all these things are like. For me, basics that people should learn from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's a lot of information. I am aware of that. I'm not expecting her to know all this tomorrow. Mm -hmm. This is something that she needs to do from now on. Yeah. Immediately. Okay. And... Yeah. Uh, Observe. So knowing what build you're going for, knowing what your game plan is and what to attack are very basic things. These are not advanced strategies. These, these, these are basics. Except no one really explains these things. Uh... You know, in most RTS games or even AOE 4, so a lot of people don't know about them. But this is something that, for example, like pro players don't even think about. 
Like, no one says, like, oh yeah, you should, like, when we discuss strats, no one says, oh yeah, you should attack Delhi Gold. To us, it's very, like, obvious. obvious. Yeah, because we've played so many games and yeah. you don't really spend time thinking about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me watch the guide. Okay, so currently you have six. Oh no, that's not you. That's seven on food. You have one going to your gold. The next gold guy is going to gold. Is he gonna help build that thing or is he going straight to gold? Um, oh, you can, but you don't need to. Okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. So three are gonna rally onto gold. Yep. Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, sir. That guy's getting on the ship. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I just oh. up. I don't know why. Yeah, I was waiting to like this way. So. Okay, and he's going on on wood now. Until the gold is ready. And then we'll edge up with the gold. Oh, yes. So this one I did the proper build. Are you good? Okay. Also, in these games, I did 10 on wood, but you can do 11 on wood. It's easier. 10 on wood is like. One is finishing, you're barely starting a new one. Okay, so I'm it's a bit harder to macro. Just do 11 on wood. Okay, and then I see here that there's a house before the barracks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's not. I did not do it. And then, and then we have 150 wood, you got the barracks. Okay, now yeah, this yeah. is the first Good test maker. Uh -huh. I'm scouting this. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm poking. See, I'm not going all the way in because I found all the resources. I found gold, yeah. berries, stone, and wood. So in these positions, look at the map. Yeah. What do you attack? You see, uh, uh, oh. I need to take the pen out of my mouth. Okay, so they're going to produce from this side. Like they can run straight through here. PC is there. Honestly, I would slide right through and put them here because even though he like it's going to pressure the gold and it's going to pressure this, um, yeah, I would attack these two. Mm. Is that the correct answer? So, you cannot attack this because yeah. it's too far away. Yeah, totally if this was on this side, I would camp that. Mm -hmm. So, my idea was, I can't attack that, it's gonna mm -hmm. be too late. So I wanted to camp the wood so he doesn't get a second DC. He okay. got a second DC very fast, which you'll see. So, you know, in retrospect, I should have done what you said, because mm -hmm. I arrived for TC to be Completely oh, already, so you'll yeah. see what I mean. Do, 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 do. But it's a good choice. So making a barracks, all the usual. And again, he just aged up, I instantly send an army. Because this is the thing. If right now he makes units, that's good for me. I already delayed the TC. Yeah, but he's not making units. Holy he shit. He made stable and then decided against it. Holy fuck, oh my god. So, he rushed out with 16. Now, Yo. so when I arrive, you can also look at this like, oh my thing didn't work. But he rushed out with 16. That's a lot of idle villagers. And he has only 6 villagers on resources right now. Okay. So it's still, it, it's indirect damage. But it's still damage. So here, I try. And I was actually very surprised that his T sword already finished, but now I know why. I didn't know he aged up with 16. So, uh, all those villages are wood. Yeah. So, here I did an oopsie doopsie. I tried to get vision so I can shoot with one goes from here. He goes in. I get this. I get shot. I did not expect the second volley here. I thought I was safe, so I turned back. But oh, apparently. Oh, that's when you molded. I think I heard you mold. Yeah. And, and barely. And this is really bad. You don't want to be me in that situation. Because losing scout is really bad. He was controlling his scout pretty well. He just kept trying to make Oh, this is where I was molding, actually. His second wood line was protected by the TC. I've never seen this. Yikes. Look at that. It's insane. I was like, what the fuck is this? So anyway, because I can't deny this right now because I lost the fucking scout. So I go around the barriers yeah, and I go around. This is pretty bad for your coach. I mean, it ain't great. <laughs> so I just check here. I'm like, okay. I check the stone because I want to. It's Abbasid, so they might go three TC. Mm -hmm. So I check the stone. I don't see anything. So I know. Okay, he's not aging up. He's not getting upgrades. He is getting food and wood. 
uh, with potential of him going on RTC from here, because this stone is very close. Oh, so the only two things he can do right now is make units or make another TC. There's not he cannot age up. He cannot get upgrades. He cannot get anything. He, He's eating the gold. He he doesn't have gold. And the other gold is here, and the other gold is here. Okay. So again I go in. I see nothing. I check the stone again. You're like, oh, he's not going in RTC, what is he doing? So I know that he's, he is most likely getting another stone, or he's just making units. Okay. I'll win TC on the deer again. Getting gold. So now, okay, he now went on the thing. He said, this is the thing. If, if I had a scout, I would see this and I can go back. But because I lost it, he can do this the moment my units move out of range because I can't see shit. So now I'm moving back because I'm preparing my next attack and I don't wanna you don't wanna stay here forever. Because yeah. see, if I stayed, I would have lost everything. Mm -hmm. And then that's pretty bad. So right now, because he knows I moved out, he is moving his economy to the right, and I'm rotating to the to the left side because I'm trying to attack the wood. If he has no wood, he has nothing to go for. So I make a tower here. He didn't see me. Uh, I don't know. Oh yeah, his scout is here. So he actually doesn't know that I'm here. And this is where I see the second stone. And I'm aware he has three TCs because I click on it and I see. So I thought he might be making a third TC here. Uh, because looking at the deer, they're spread. So I thought he's making TC literally right now. Because it's a perfect time. Where was his third TC? His TC was here. You can see it on the minimap because uh, I had this point of view on. But I didn't scout that. So... I'm making a tower, and this is where I see him like trying to, I guess, counterattack or get the reinforcements. So I quickly change the rally point. Why didn't you um, build a, another scout? Uh, you can, okay. uh, but uh, it's a villager lost. Okay. So it's like you, you can do that if you feel more comfortable. I used to do that when I played English. I would always remake the scout, but now. When you do the build enough, you're kind of like, eh, it's fine, I'll do, I'll go without it. Mm. So, right now, I know that he is, I just saw his army, so I know he's coming here. So I'm getting ready to fight. This was unfortunate. I didn't move my villager because I thought it would finish. Mm -hmm. And you'll see how close it was. Um, but yeah, he goes in here. I shoot immediately. Or I shoot another time. And look now at the mic. I'm going to put half speed. So longbows are on the archers, spears are trying to protect the villagers, and trying to protect the archers. Holy shit. Yeah, that's a KW. So now look at this. I move my longbows around my spearmen, so I don't run them away. He doesn't want to shoot my longbows with archers, so I'm not worried if he's going to be shooting my longbows. He wants to shoot spearmen. So now, it's kind of like the, the League of Legends, you know, zoning out ADC. They're always in between horsemen. And now if horsemen arrive, they'll see, I'll still rotate. So the spearmen are attacking the whole time. And now he's getting choked up here. So sometimes obviously you can use terrain to your advantage. And now I'm trying to target fire the, the low HP horsemen. So this trade was really good for me. So now I'm double the army supply. I'm on 2TC. And this is the one difference between English and other civs. Mm. So first thing, I have my upgrades going. He is behind, but I have two army upgrades going. Well, that's because he has a third TC. But English, I'm very fine on food. Like mm. I had farms for a while. I can also add farms at any point. He, because he has so many villagers, that's great but he's mowing down the food at, at an extremely fast rate because he has more workers and he's producing horsemen which are really expensive. more food yeah Come out, that's hot. so he gets actually a pretty fast castle for he basically tries to skip feudal in a way to kind of try to run away so he walls up here which is great and he goes for more berries which is great and i just do another push so the push is coming in, I bring two villagers to put a tower, and now I have men at arms. So now the trading for him becomes a lot more awkward and he just runs. He doesn't 
want to attempt two fights because these men at arms are not going to die in the middle of the fight they're only going to die if i lose everything else so now he's running here because i have units so i was expecting more army because it's very uncommon for obviously to rush castle this fast because it's risky and you'll see why it's risky so here I'm waiting, I'm just chilling, waiting for my tower to finish because I'm thinking I'll just deny the tower. Meanwhile, I got one man at arm that I sent through here to check for the food. We found it. I see the third TC and I see a shit ton of villagers. The deer pack is gone. These bears are gone. So the only food source he has is this right now. Which is again what I was talking about like against Delhi. He's, you know, getting depleted and getting out of food. I'm putting a man at arm here. Shift Q and move command. Which actually built this, I don't even know when, but I'm denying two food sources with one men in arm, or at least seeing. One tower that's coming up soon. So I upgraded this tower because I had 50 extra stones, so I was like, fuck, I might as well. And now I just rotate to the food source. So yeah, when this age up finished, I was like, what the fuck? Because now this tells me, like, this guy has no units, I can just push. So, I was still producing units at this time, and immediately, just like the last game, he castles, I insta go farms. And you'll see more and more farms being popped down in a moment. Uh, I, I can't remember where I put them. And here I go for harassment. So again, what units you make in castle? You make men at arms, you make siege, you make knights. If I deny the gold, he can't make any of those. So what does he have? He has a scuff feudal. Or actually like a, like a better feudal. Because he's still making crap units. So... He gets pushed off with the gold. I can see his army is running, which means mm -hmm. he's trying to buy time, which makes me want to push more, not yeah. less. One man at arm here. So right now, if you look at my vision, I know that he's not chopping wood. I know he has no food sources here. Uh, this I didn't scout yet. But if I look at the situation, the only food he can get is this, even mm -hmm. though it's outside of his base. So soon I send few units there. Uh, here's more farms, a little bit scuffed, but still in range. So I sent a few units there, and I'm just trying to delay his resources as much as I can. I see this, and this is the same situation as last game. Yeah. This is 48, last game was 38 villagers. Yikes. So this is again, it's really really bad. Obviously because it's Abbasid, it's not all of his workers, but mm. it ain't great, Chief. So he's losing some workers there. And I'm not producing anymore, I'm just waiting to age up. Yeah, I mean, he can't attack me right now. I'm attacking him. So I put all the farms, I'm rallying workers onto the food, even the berries, whatever. Just to get age up as fast as I can. I'm making a ramp. Because, um, why not? Now's the time. Because killing second TC is always not a bad idea. He's making a run. He sh oh, I was gonna say he should have made Mangrel, but he doesn't have gold, so. Yeah. What is he gonna do with that one man? Alright, let's kill this. Oh. 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 Okay. It's the villager die. Nice. Yeah, so this is something I could have done better, because it was kind of obvious this one, but he has no food gathering, so I should have sent something here earlier. I couldn't send from this side because it's walled. Oh, oh yeah, and this is where I send one Chad to check. Oh, Chad. Oh, okay. So I don't go for main TC because it has more health. 7k health, this one has 2.5. So I just go for the extra TC to kill it. I see his whole army is here. Because he just destroys the tower. So I just go for the TC. My age up is completed. Instantly, I research longbows. And Gloomery was already going up. So now, the same thing happens, like last game. By the way, my units are right here, so I'm killing this. So same thing, I'm, I'm not looking to win the game right now. I'm looking to buy time, because I'm doing damage. So I'm running away, as far from my base, trying to buy time, trade out better, and do the same thing. I'm re-walling the whole map, so that mm. I don't take damage against knights. So now I'm mitering my longbows. These are veteran archers and they're still trading worse. 
He has no scout, so another trick you can do is you can wait for him to stealth force. I was gonna run, but when I saw stealth force here, you can attack, and now he has terrible vision, so it's actually very hard for him to click on these because sometimes they disappear. So I just trade up. I send my longbows here, and again, I'm splitting units to cause as much chaos as possible. My eco is more than fine. He gets in with the uh, cavalry, but I'm already, I've been producing again since I aged up. So I already have units back in my base. He loses everything here. I still have a mill here, so I know he's not gathering anything there. And at this point, the game is uh, over. So he had 20 villager lead now. He's about to be behind. And I killed one TC and I'm on three. Here's my third one. Here. Ooh. And not to mention, again, and this is the advantage of English, my food is already done. I don't need to make farms. I have I had like 40 farms. These villagers are idle because they're TCs. But my food is done. So from now on, if you keep pushing and attacking, eventually he runs out of food and needs to make farms. And the moment he needs to make farms, you can kill him. Because they're not going to be in the same spot, it's going to cost too much. Well, yeah, it's 70... What is it, 75 wood yeah. per farm? I can see. Right. So he gets very far behind because he has to stop producing. Okay. So this is why, kids, you can't rush castle anymore. <laughs> That's why the castle meta is gone, because you just take so much damage that... even if castles. Even if you have bad at arms and knights, you won't be able to produce enough to beat out the little army. Okay, well this was very informative. I think I should be able to use this information quite Hopefully. well. And let's see if I can apply it. So I'm gonna make a new account. For those of you who are asking, I am gonna stream this, but I'll probably like... I'll do it in the mornings when he's asleep, because I still want to spend time with the man, you know. So it's gonna be the opposite of your schedules. Um, but yeah, we'll report back every few days. I'll go play a few games now. I'm ready. There it is. <laughs> there it is. So yeah, all these things, you have the VOD as well on Twitch, so you can check or you can just ask me because we're same In the place. same house? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, we'll do these like, I would say every two, three, four, probably not every two, every two is too many. Every probably three, five days, three, four, five days. Uh, so the next time we do this, I'm not gonna go all over you, again this. You can watch my replay. I'll watch your replays and tell her what okay. you did wrong and Don't everything me. else. And obviously losses, not, I'm not going through her wins. Okay. So with this build, you can beat any Civ. Really? You can beat any Civ in Conquer 3 with this build. Okay, if with, in just, Conquer 3. If you execute properly. So if, if we can do it, I can do it. You can do it. Okay. There's always a solution to whatever uh, you play. You just need to adjust a couple of things. Like I said, English versus English, this doesn't really work because it's a weird matchup. But yeah, in general, it's all good. Oh yeah, I'm not ready to. You're not ready? You were benched? No, no, no. I they they apparently got 22. Yeah. Oh my god. I mean. Too late. Too late. Uh. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, let me do the sign up. If you're watching this on YouTube, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate it. I hope you enjoy this. And we'll be back with the next one. I don't know how many episodes I'll do over this. We'll see. We'll see. How fast it takes you to get conquered. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you, YouTube, for Twitch gamers. Time Let's study. keep going. <laughs>